Okay, great. Thanks everyone for being here, uh, for being here uh, in the early morning. Um, yeah, I'm Dan Sang, a professor from UC Berkeley. Today I'll talk about deep learning for program synthesis, lessons, and challenges. Okay, so first, what is program synthesis? Uh, it's about teaching computers to write code. Um, given an uh, intent or specification, uh, the program synthesizer <laughs> hopefully to uh, be able to synthesize a piece of code uh, that will perform the task. And program synthesis is, is very useful in many domains. For example, it's helpful for end user programming uh, to enable users who don't know how to code to accomplish the task that they want to accomplish. And it can be used for performance of optimization of code. And you can even uh, right, use program synthesis to synthesize um, more complex tasks such as uh, virtual assistants. So when we talk about program synthesis, uh, there, uh, it's a broad domain, and there are different ways that we can look at, along different dimensions, we can look at uh, program synthesis. Uh, so first, uh, how we actually specify programming intent. So there are different ways to specify essentially what we want the program to do. For example, we can specify using natural language um, we can, uh, to, to describe the task. Uh, we can uh, specify using input output examples. Uh, we give the task a sample input output examples to try to then automatically synthesize a program that will satisfy uh, these examples. And we can also do translation. For example, we already have programs uh, in one programming language, and we can try to translate it into another programming language. We can also look at the program synthesis domain <coughs> along the dimension of how we represent the generated program. The generated program actually can be represented in different ways. One is it can be a fully differentiable uh, <coughs> representation, such as uh, neural networks. Or it can be completely discrete, uh, like the typical program that we write manually. <coughs> or it can be a hybrid that combines differentiable and non-differentiable components. So why do we care about program synthesis? So besides the um, you know, other useful uh, applications that program synthesis can enable, so for me personally, I'm really excited about program synthesis, especially because um, I strongly believe that it is a perfect playground for intelligence. It's an ultimate challenge for AGI, artificial general intelligence. I joke with my uh, robotics colleagues uh, that pro uh, program synthesis is like building robots without being limited by physics. Essentially, you need to solve all the similar problems that you need to solve in robotics and other <coughs> such as you have to model the world, you have to define goals and decompose goals into sub-goals, and you need to be able to do abstraction and reasoning, and you need to do planning and search. And also, broadly speaking, synthesis by learning is a very powerful lens through which we can actually um, broadly look at different problems. They can all be viewed as a synthesis problem. So the program synthesis problem that I just mentioned, essentially here, the target of synthesis is, uh, is a piece of code, it's programs. Um, <clears throat> right, we can also do learning-based program optimization. We can also look at the other targets of synthesis. Uh, one example is uh, as the target of synthesis is actually models, for example, architectures of uh, like <laughs> machine learning models. So in this case, we call it a model, essentially we can call it a model synthesis, um, such as what we have been doing in the domain of AutoML, where we are automatically searching for uh, machine learning models or neural network architectures uh, to solve certain tasks. We can also look at uh, uh, proofs as targets of synthesis. Then in this case, we have proof synthesis, and uh, then the problem domain is automatic theorem proving. The target of synthesis can also be action plans, and, <coughs> and this is uh, what we typically do in robotics, where we synthesize uh, uh, robot action plans, or we can even synthesize um, uh, robot agents. And we can even have targets of synthesis as games or creations. Then in this case, we have the uh, domain of creative synthesis, where the task itself may not be 
um, exactly specified where we just let computers to synthesize what it you know, imagines and what it comes up, comes up with um, in the domain of creative synthesis. And hence, I think uh, this is also another reason why it's important to uh, study synthesis, uh, program synthesis, because this really gives us um, techniques and lessons that can be broadly applicable in many other domains where essentially um, for a lot of tasks or domains that we are studying, uh, essentially we are doing synthesis. So in my group, we have been doing uh, work in program synthesis uh, in different uh, parts of the program synthesis domain. Uh, one area we have, been, uh, we have been looking at is how we can translate natural language description into code to help end user programming. We have done work in the domain of uh, if TTT programs, if this then that programs. Uh, so for example, you can synthesize code to say that if it's going to rain tomorrow, send me a text message. Uh, recently, we've also done work uh, synthesizing uh, SQL queries from natural language description. This is particularly useful for uh, enabling end users to be able to do data analytics on um, big data without actually being able to uh, even know how to program SQL. Uh, we've also done work uh, in uh, program synthesis on many other tasks. Uh, and if over this body of work, we uh, essentially are using these examples to actually try to explore uh, the, challenge, the various challenges in the domain of program synthesis and uh, try to distill lessons and help uh, push forward the frontier in program synthesis. So in this talk, I will talk about uh, several important challenges uh, that I think uh, it's important for us to push forward the frontier in the domain of program synthesis. And I'll use some of our uh, own work as concrete examples to illustrate the challenges and also uh, to share some of the lessons that we have learned. So broadly speaking, the challenges that we'll cover in this talk includes how we can, uh, perform, uh, how, how we can better generalize in program synthesis, uh, what we should be doing for evaluation, where we need to be careful, uh, the test set that we construct and how we actually evaluate uh, the performance uh, of our algorithms, and how we can really help scale program synthesis to larger tasks, and how we can adapt to new tasks, and ultimately, uh, as a whole community, how we can actually develop better benchmark suites for program synthesis. So first, let me talk about generalization. So, um, okay. so for, program, uh, for neural program synthesis, as I mentioned, one example is that you give it uh, input to output example pairs. So in this case, you can give uh, the input as two digits and the output as the sum of the two digits. And then you can, uh, given a neural program architecture, you can train a learned neural program, hopefully to be able to perform the task, given two new uh, digits as input to produce the output um, as the sum of the two digits. There has been a long a line of work in neural program synthesis uh, for different types of tasks. However, uh, one really important uh, problem, especially for program synthesis, is that we really want to be able to synthesize programs that can generalize, uh, that it can be able to solve the task even for uh, distributions of inputs that it has not seen before. So most of the earlier work essentially suffer from two main challenges in terms of generalization. One is that many of them really suffer from the uh, inability to generalize. Uh, for example, many of the earlier work, uh, when you give it, uh, in the example of addition, when you give it uh, uh, training inputs of, let's say, uh, 30 digit long, then it won't be able to generalize to uh, input digit of, for example, 100 digit long. Um, and another challenge is that there's no uh, proof of generalization. So even if empiric empirically, when you test the, the inputs, it uh, can uh, give correct answers, but still, you don't really know when you give it a new test input how it will behave for the output. Uh, again, for program synthesis, unlike many of the other uh, 
uh, learning tasks, it's particularly important to be able to generalize because the hope is that we synthesize a program that can really do the task perfectly. So in uh, one of our uh, recent work, we developed uh, uh, this new approach for introducing recursion uh, into neural uh, program architectures and learning recursive neural programs and using this approach to significantly uh, improve our ability for generalization. Uh, so recursion is a fundamental concept in computer science and math. Uh, we solve a whole problem by reducing it to two smaller sub-problems sub um, by using reduction rules. And so we reduce it all the way to base cases. These are the smallest sub-problems that are much easier to reason about. And many of these program synthesis tasks, such as quick sort and so on, they actually naturally uh, uh, can be, uh, they can be naturally expressed uh, using recursion. And they naturally essentially have a recursive structure. So in our recent approach, making neural programming architectures generalized by recursion, um, we showed that by introducing recursion into neural program architectures and by learning recursive neural programs, uh, one, we can actually, uh, for the first time, generate a proof of generalization. So for the learned, uh, programs, once it passes a verification procedure, we can show that uh, essentially then the learned neural program can actually uh, generalize perfectly, meaning that for all, uh, for arbitrary uh, inputs, it can um, out produce the correct results. And in this case, recursion really enables uh, provable guarantees about the neural programs. And also, we show that. Uh, Learning recursive neural programs also can help you to learn and generalize much faster. And this won the Best Paper Awards last year. So uh, from iClear. Um, so there are a few lessons that were learned from this work. Uh, one is that the program architecture really impacts generalization and probability. Uh, probability. And, um, in particular, recursive and modular neural architectures are much easier to reason, prove, and generalize. So in particular, when you look at the earlier neural uh, programming architectures, um, you can really see that uh, they don't really have this type of recursive and modular architecture. And hence, it's, uh, for the neural architecture, when they learn um, a, a, a program synthesis task, often it learns this spurious dependencies, for example, on the length of inputs. And that's why uh, these learned neural programs have difficulty generalizing. Um, and by having recursive and modular neural architectures, it addresses this problem, removes the dependency of the learned neural programs uh, from, for example, the length of the uh, inputs and hence make it much easier to generalize and also enable us to actually have a proof of generalization. And we still have a lot of open challenges in this direction. Uh, we uh, need to explore new architectures and approaches to enable strong generalization and uh, uh, security properties for broader tasks uh, beyond the examples that we have given in our paper, for example. And we are exploring uh, this direction for other more complex tasks, uh, including uh, uh, certain robotics tasks as well. So that's the first part uh, for generalization. Uh, another very important challenge is, uh, for program synthesis is evaluation. How we actually evaluate um, how well the uh, essential our learning algorithms is doing for these tasks. So this is especially challenging when we are doing program synthesis uh, via learning uh, using certain uh, data sets that we, gener uh, that, that we generate. So for example, there has been a lot of work on neural program synthesis uh, with input output examples, uh, including the, some of the most recent work in the domain on, for example, the Caro data set, uh, which is um, uh, like a world where you have agents that can move around uh, and perform certain actions. So these methods are learned to search over possible programs to perform certain tasks or satisfy uh, these uh, input output example constraints. Um, 
and using super, uh, and they are done using supervised learning with a large synthetic training set. So the hypothesis uh, is that uh, we train on the synthetic data, uh, data sets. So given a large enough random training set, the neural program synthesis model will then learn and then work well on arbitrary, uh, you know, uh, uh, arbitrary uh, inputs, uh, uh, input outputs uh, examples. How, uh, and also, uh, so a lot of these, uh, uh, some of this recent work actually give very, very impressive results when you look at the experimental results. But however, when we look deeper, when we uh, actually experiment it further with these uh, learned, um, uh, with these algorithms and the learned programs, we find that these models, even though on the test sets, for example, given in the papers, uh, they can produce very good results. But actually, as it turns out, when you do further experiments with uh, these learned models, we discovered that these models can be highly sensitive to how the random data was generated for more complex domains, such as CARO. And in particular, when we actually choose different input output examples, uh, our programs, uh, it can actually decrease accuracy all the way down to 0%, even though on the original test test, you can have very high accuracy. And this uh, essentially motivates our, uh, demonstrates the challenge that we need a new data generation methodology for uh, performing these tasks and also for evaluating these uh, learned programs. So this is uh, some uh, results showing that on, the, on evaluating state-of-the-art learning uh, algorithms for uh, training, uh, for, for essentially learning uh, how to synthesize programs with given input <laughs> output examples on the CARO data sets. For example, on uh, existing uh, test data sets, we can, uh, the learned programs can uh, achieve very high accuracy, over 70%. But as you vary the actual distribution over the input output examples, uh, in newly generated test data sets, but varying essentially various parameters in the configuration of the, for example, of the, uh, the input output example. Um, then we show that for certain configurations, the, um, the accuracy of the, uh, the synthesis and the learned synthesis essentially can go all the way down to close to 0%. And then we demonstrate that when we augment the training data uh, with a more uniform distribution over the possible input output examples, we can significantly recover the performance on these specialized distributions. And uh, the results showing that when we do this uh, training on a more uniform distribution uh, over, uh, in the training data set, the overall performance um, actually uh, the <coughs> can, can uh, significantly improve. So the lessons learned here is that we actually need to be really careful, especially when we are dealing with the synth uh, synthetic data sets. Um, these randomly generated data sets, even though they are supposed, uh, supposedly to be randomly generated, but they actually can have unexpected uh, bias uh, in the generated data sets. And oftentimes, the simple methods for random sampling may be insufficient. And hence, it's very important to consider the distributions over inputs um, as well as programs. And we need a new methodology for synthetic, uh, for generating synthetic data, both for testing, uh, for training and testing. For example, we need to define very salient random variables so that we can capture the desired features of the input space and the program space. And also, we need to ensure uniformity uh, uh, of the random variables as much as possible. And the training with this new methodology can lead to significant performance improvement on the various uh, test sets. And overall, I would say that this is just um, at the beginning. Uh, in particular, uh, in program synthesis, as we uh, generate these synthetic data sets, there are lots of uh, <coughs> different issues. How, uh, so, so uh, there are uh, many uh, you know, new techniques uh, that we need to explore how to address uh, this problem better. 
Uh, so, so far I've talked about the challenge for generalization and how to do better evaluation. Uh, and also next I want to talk about the, the challenge for scalability. This is really the, um, I would say the holy grail for program synthesis is that we actually want to be able to synthesize programs uh, of bigger and bigger scale. So far we can, uh, despite the, uh, oh, I only have one minute left. Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we started a little bit late. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So far, scalability. <clears throat> so far, despite the decades of um, uh, experience and uh, efforts uh, that overall program synthesis domain uh, has had, including both program synthesis using more traditional uh, uh, program verification techniques and uh, you know, symbolic reasoning techniques, as well as the more recent uh, learning-based techniques, still today we can only synthesize programs uh, of very, very small size. Uh, so I would really uh, right, say that's one of the main next steps that we want the program synthesis domain to push forward is how we can uh, learn to synthesize bigger programs. So uh, to, towards addressing this problem, we have been exploring different, uh, uh, different directions to how to help us to scale uh, for, uh, pro for, the <laughs> for program synthesis. So the first I'll briefly talk about is how we can actually combine discrete and differentiable uh, uh, approaches uh, to improve the scalability for program synthesis. And also the second I'll briefly talk about how we can automatically learn better abstractions to use this to help us to scale to uh, more complex program synthesis tasks. Um, given the time limit, I'll go over this uh, very quickly. So first I want to introduce um, another new program synthesis task uh, in uh, one of our recent work. Here we are trying to synthesize a neural parser. So a parser is that given a string, uh, our, uh, uh, like a statement, how you can automatically parse it into, for example, an AST, or how to parse it into a parse tree. And the question is given the input, which is the statement, and the output, which is a parse tree, how you can automatically synthesize the parser. Writing parsers manually can be a very tedious task and can be error prone. And being able to automatically synthesize parsers uh, one is it can be very helpful, and then two, uh, this is a much more complex task than the typical pro program synthesis tasks that the uh, program synthesis domain has been dealing with. And this is also an example illustrating some of the challenges in the existing approaches. Um, for example, for end-to-end -end neural uh, networks uh, based approach, you can do sequence-to-sequence -sequence based models. But this, uh, especially in our experiments for this type of task, it really doesn't generalize well at all. Um, and we can take the approach of neural symbolic program synthesis, but again, this type of approach uh, has challenge in uh, the size of the uh, synthesized programs they can handle. And for the neural uh, program interpreter-like approaches, the, uh, it requires supervision on program uh, for, for uh, execution choices. So in this work, we wanted to uh, take a much weaker supervision without execution choices. We want to uh, achieve uh, full generalization, ideally uh, achieve 100% accuracy on arbitrarily long inputs. And also we want to train with just a few examples. So in this work, we explored a new pr approach by combining uh, differentiable and non-differentiable components together. In particular, we learn a differentiable neural programs operating a non-differentiable machine. <coughs> so essentially we have uh, what we call an LL machine that's a non-differentiable uh, that just has a few instructions that's operating a stack and we automatically learn a differentiable program uh, given the the input how to then generate the parser to a uh, neural parser to operate on this uh, LL machine to be able to produce um, the desired parse tree as an output. So uh, I won't have time to go into the details, but in this case, the, um, 
Right. So the structure of the L machine also naturally embeds recursion into the approach. And, and to solve the challenge that the execution trees is unknown, we utilize reinforcement learning. And also to enable the um, uh, reinforcement learning to work in a large space, we, uh, we propose a two-phased search algorithm uh, using reinforcement learning. And with our experimental results, we achieve uh, actually uh, very uh, strong results. Uh, where in our uh, experiments we achieve actually uh, full generalization and, uh, and full accuracy. So the lessons we learn here is that by combining discrete uh, and, and the non-differentiable and differentiable components, we can actually achieve um, actually much better generalization and um, uh, full accuracy in this case for um, like for in, for tap, test inputs that actually with less 500 times longer than the training inputs, whereas the end-to-end -end neural network's accuracy in this case is 0%. So the design of this uh, combination uh, is actually really, and the design of the non-differentiable machine uh, is crucial to regularize the programs that can be synthesized, and the leveraging reinforcement learning algorithm is a key to train the neural network components to learn complex programs. So due to the time limit, I won't have uh, much time to talk about uh, the second part, how we can, uh, for solving scalability, how we can actually learn uh, better abstractions. But the, I'll just talk about the high level uh, point is that we want to, uh, as one uh, really important aspect for program synthesis for larger scale programs is that we need to really learn how to synthesize structured programs. And in programming languages, actually, when we write programs, we actually have all these different levels of abstractions, including functions, struct uh, structures, procedure, object-oriented. And as we synthesize larger programs, we actually need to think about how we synthesize these type of structured programs. And, uh, and the one key challenge here is how we can actually learn these structures. So in uh, one of our recent work, uh, that was <laughs> in the recent iClear uh, program, the, the previous work was also in the recent uh, iClear uh, conference, is that we learned how to automatically extract what we call this parameterized hierarchical procedures, such that essentially even when you give it a weak supervision uh, without many execution traces, we want to be able to automatically uh, infer or learn these um, higher level structures, how these different, uh, how the lower level actions can be grouped into these hierarchical structures. And we actually uh, propose a new approach using this expectation gradient algorithm to uh, help us to automatically extract these uh, hierarchical, higher level abstractions. And in our uh, experiments, we achieve uh, essentially, uh, right, uh, better accuracy, better results uh, than previous work. So the lessons we learned here is that um, we can learn programs represented by neural networks from behavior with unseen internal structures. And this uh, approach, the PHP structure, follows a hierarchical procedural paradigm, uh, including conditional branching, call stack, program counters, and so on. So this, uh, uh, our, approach gives an efficient learning algorithm to achieve these, uh, to, to enable these uh, goals and to achieve greater, uh, uh, to achieve better results. Um, and another challenge is that, uh, uh, that I won't really have time to actually go into, and I think it's a very much needed uh, area for exploration, is really for program synthesis so far, just like many tasks in machine learning and deep learning that we have been performing so far, is that mainly we train uh, a new program or uh, we train a, a machine learning model to f perform a specific task. But really for learning, especially I think for program synthesis, we want to train a model to learn uh, from the past to accumulate knowledge from past ex experience so that it can actually learn to adapt to new tasks so that 
when you give it a new task, it can then learn how to program to, um, uh, to perform the new task. And uh, I think this also leads to the open question, how we should uh, develop a better uh, benchmark suite for program synthesis. So as we know, a lot of the machine learning tasks are really driven are, are uh, uh, these um, bench, uh, uh, benchmark suites can really help the community to drive forward uh, for making progress in the domain. But of course, it's really important to figure out what are the good tasks, uh, what are the good benchmark to um, uh, uh, right uh, to build, uh, and in particular for pro program synthesis, given the complexity of the domain. Also, as I mentioned, we want to train, for example, program synthesis to be able to perform new tasks, and hence we need to be able to figure out how, as a whole community, how we can develop uh, these benchmark suites that can help us to, one, push forward progress in the community, and also to properly measure the progress that we perform in the, uh, in the program synthesis domain. So again, I won't have time to go into the details, um, and I think this is a very important open question for the whole community to, uh, uh, to focus on. And I just wanted to briefly mention one of the new, um, uh, new tools and environments that we have uh, released recently is in the domain of uh, program, uh, theorem proving. So in particular, uh, we are interested in how we can actually help uh, automate the theorem proving process, in particular at close to human level, um, uh, but still <laughs> with a formal verification. Um, so in this case, we have a recent work uh, called GamePad, uh, theorem proving as a game and proofs as data. Um, and we essentially provide a Python API for the uh, COG uh, proof trees. Uh, and the lightweight interaction with COG. Uh, so uh, using this environment, essentially we can uh, treat interactive theorem proving as a game, where given goals, you want to automatically explore uh, the proof steps to drive towards the goal uh, of the, um, uh, the, uh, right, the theorem that, uh, to be able to prove the theorem. And uh, again, I won't have time to go into the details of our work, uh, where we also explore some uh, new uh, representation for uh, the uh, proof states. Uh, and uh, uh, in our recent experiments, also look at uh, di how different uh, uh, learning approaches perform on these tasks. Um, but overall, so I just wanted to mention that, uh, right, so we have the system released uh, and the paper online and that actually offers a system for people to uh, much more easily explore the domain of theorem proving and to, <coughs> to build your own theorem proving agents to be able to um, do this automatic theorem proving uh, in the COG environment. To summarize, I think for program synthesis as a whole community, we have seen a lot of uh, recent progress um, for different tasks. Uh, that uh, we can, as a whole community, that we can do much better now um, than before. But however, still, uh, we have many open challenges, in particular, how we can achieve generalization for broader tasks, uh, programming synthesis tasks, how we can do better evaluation, uh, both to, uh, for better evaluation for the learning programs in a specific experiment, as well as uh, for the whole community, how we can better evaluate these, uh, the progress that we are making uh, in program synthesis. And also, uh, I think the holy grail is how we can actually do program synthesis for um, much bigger programs. And ultimately, we do want uh, program synthesis to be able to produce the kind of programs that today the uh, software engineers write. And and also, it's very important for us to be able to adapt, to train uh, these uh, program synthesis models to be able to automatically adapt to new tasks. And also for the whole community, I think it'd be great, especially for audience here, uh, since everybody here is interested in the uh, domain of program synthesis, and also just community at large, to figure out how together we can uh, produce 
but the benchmark suite to both help push forward the progress in the community as well as to help us to measure the progress uh, of program synthesis. With that, thank you.